Shemai, Achoi Soiskos, Podlediad Consortium Knobat the Day. And a Podlediad Hun, but looking clowered a trouble day there do with Ara and Bob Math or Bethe Arisk. Hello and welcome to SCOS, the Central South Consortium podcast. In this podcast, we'll bring you the very latest discussions on all things education. Hello and welcome to SCOS. Um, I'm Emma Jackson Phillips and I'm Associate Advisor for Languages, Literacy and Communication at Central South Consortium. And I'm joined by Evan Richards, who is Year 6 teacher. AOLE lead for LLC and deputy head from Porthcawl Primary and Amy Watkins who is second in English at Bryn Kalinog Comprehensive School. We're going to be tackling a biggie today, reading. Um, why is reading so important? Well many of our listeners will have um, had a little bit of a dive into our research reflection all about the GL assessment report which tells us that reading is the biggest predictor of GCSE success, not only in English, but across the board in terms of all subjects. It is the medium through which we gain knowledge, as well as a body of knowledge and skills in its own right. Um, To kick us off today, I want us to think about, do we really teach reading? I know we may think we do, but are we actually teaching the skills, knowledge and experiences needed to make progress? Do we assign it, um, read aloud with our classes, but do we teach it explicitly? Is reading with a class always teaching reading? And do we really know what it means to teach reading? Okay, so um, yeah. And so I think that question is probably a bit easier for me to start off with, because in primary school, I think we kind of have it a bit easier because we're responsible for teaching everything. So I I suppose in secondary school, it's a bit more of a challenge where you've got your English teachers and you've got all of the other subjects. And we also have our pupils coming in at um, kind of the same level when they come in with us at nursery where we have all of our pupils coming in and our main aim then is to get them by the end of year six up to a level where they're confident readers and I think one of the big things with the teaching of reading is um, it's such a wide ranging thing teaching reading you've got all of the different types of reading with from reading aloud to group reading to silent reading And I think one of the big challenges is how we most effectively use our time that we have with the pupils, getting our pupils from the stage when they come in with us and we start off with the decoding and breaking down the sounds up to the point when they leave us at the end of year six as fluent, confident readers and we've developed that love for reading. So I think it is a really challenging thing to how we best use our time when we do our reading activities. Yeah, I agree with um, with what you're saying there, Evan, um, particularly in relation to the, the, the kind of different types of reading um, the, and they each have their role, don't they, within the classroom, um, you know, for, for pupils to be reading aloud, for them be, to being read too, and also um, to kind of develop the muscle for that silent, independent reading. Um, and I don't think that's always something that's um, considered it it wasn't always considered in my my classroom just the importance of of those three Um, and it is difficult to try and make it an equal playing field and get them up to the same stage in terms of those those proficiencies Um, Amy what do you think about some of those those questions that I posed at the start there so for us I think in secondary particularly as we're moving into key stage four um we tend to have so learners tend to be more fluent more confident so we are focused more on the skills of reading so applying certain reading skills depending on usually if it's for language for example things like skills of comparison things of summer summarize skills um and i think that is really important and that sort of informs what we teach then at key stage three making sure that that's embedded in our reading curriculum But I do sometimes think that because then we are so focused on the skills that can be a little bit limiting in terms of reading a longer text and then being able to sort of reading a novel with a class, for example, and then being able to um, to enjoy that with the class and then being able to sort of teach explicitly 
um, the actual skill of comprehension and fluency as we're reading it. Um, and I think that sometimes that gets lost in secondary school because we are so focused on those very specific skills. Of course, that's necessary. We need that because that is a, you know, ultimately what they're going to be tested yeah. on. Um, but I do think that is something that perhaps we don't always consider and we don't always think about. We, we don't let that, um, we don't put that into our kind of classroom practice because we are so focused on, on the skills. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's one of the things that's coming out of the, the research, that it's not just the kind of breadth of texts that we're exposing the pupils to, but also the the um, the, the length of text and, and developing their, their muscles to kind of read a whole text. I mean, it was fashionable previously to um, kind of dip in and out of extracts. But one practitioner said to me last week, nobody remembers an extract they read in school. They remember a full text. Um, and it's so, so important that, that pupils are, are getting that experience. A little bit of a controversial question to put you on the spot here, Amy. But do you think that um, one, of, one of the perhaps challenges at secondary would be the fact that maybe not all teachers see themselves as teachers of, of reading? Um, so do you think it's still considered kind of the realm of the English teacher or the literacy specialist, whereas I suppose other subjects could be having their... Their, their, their chance to deepen these skills. Yeah, I, I do think that, that in, in, a, in a lot of contexts that, that is that is still the case um, where even though you know we, we've already talked about the importance of reading for students to be able to access the curriculum you know and, and other subjects across the curriculum but I do still think that in a secondary setting it is still seen as the job of the literacy teacher or the English teacher um, to be those teachers of reading. Um, that, that being said, um, I think more is being done to, to, you know, more research and, and kind of inquiry is being done to make that, um, to bring that to the forefront so that other teachers are, are aware of how important that is. But I do still think that is one of our main challenges, yes. Yeah, definitely. And I know, Evan, you have um, taken part in the Reading Reconsidered um, training, um, which has kind of a very broad approach to reading um, and thinking about uh, reading as a platform for vocabulary instruction, um, reading as a platform for um, building a, a, a low threat culture where everybody's expected to read aloud or um, the idea of embedding non-fiction. Um, I wondered whether you've perhaps had a go at implementing any of those strategies and what some of the, the effects of those have been. Yeah, so um, the read and reconsidered approach has definitely changed the way we've done lots of things and it's had a really positive impact. I think um, one of the things we've brought in recently is trying to um, give our pupils as many opportunities to do different types of reading. So um, the reading aloud that we brought in, we, we do reciprocal reading every day where we would do the extracts and we would do the shorter bits of text. but having the reading aloud has allowed us to have the whole class novel at the end of the day and I think that's one of the activities that our pupils really really enjoy getting involved in and having that low threat reading aloud and actually getting involved in a text and it's actually 10 minutes at the end of the day where um, we're reading for the sake of actually enjoying a text and actually mm. getting involved and yeah. it's had a really big impact and it's just um, brought out lots of discussion on the book as well which um, has been really good and we've had um, uh, we're currently doing holes in year six and the pupils um, absolutely love the book and we end the day every day chatting about the book as we're walking out of the door so that that's been a really good approach but um, we've also had the embedding non-fiction approach from reading reconsidered which is had a huge impact. So what that involves is um, when we're doing our visual literacy approach in our writing lessons, we then link um, a non-fiction text to the thing we're doing in our literacy lesson. So for example, at the moment in class, we're looking at Rose Blanche, which is linked to World War II. And we are currently about to write a letter about a concentration camp. So actually in class today, which is a great coincidence, um, mm -hmm. we actually looked at a letter that Gandhi wrote to Hitler trying to convince Hitler um, not to go ahead with the war. And it just had such a big impact because our pupils were reading something linked to what we were looking at in our writing. And it allows you then to stretch the pupils without really realising they're being stretched because they have this big interest and because they know so much about what we're reading about. So I think Read and Reconsider has definitely changed the way we do things um, in a positive way here. Yeah, I love that that idea. You know, you're talking about embedding 
non-fiction um, and, and kind of building up the people's cultural capital because it's it's something that we do but perhaps we, would, we wouldn't have done it in such a targeted way without um, without the reading reconsidered um, training and it's 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 showing that it's not just a case of pupils learning to read um, but they're also reading to learn um, and all of this kind of stimulus helps to build build them up in terms of other subject areas as well because you said about kind of reading for for enjoyment at the end of the day um, but that reading for enjoyment is a platform for discussion um, they're having um, exposure to vocabulary um, you're building a whole school culture of, of reading um, so it's 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 really really important um, to move on to a little bit more of a kind of a negative tone um, but a, but an important question nevertheless what are some of the main challenges uh, barriers in terms of developing our learners reading um, and I'm going to deliberately point out that um, some of the elephants in the room here would obviously be you know reading at home the impact of COVID-19 um, reading in the digital age um, so I wanted us to be quite quite realistic um, when we're discussing some of these challenges that we're facing in the classroom yeah, um, just to, to chip in, certainly reading at home, like you said, is is one of the most difficult things because the parents you know, may not necessarily have access to the resources and having yeah. those tools. And I, th I think certainly in, in secondary, having that school library and the librarian who the library is well resourced and the librarian themselves is really knowledgeable about the kind of texts that um, students that are going to ignite students' enjoyment of reading, things that they are going to want to read. I think that's a that's a such an important tool for a school to have. Um, and, and so I think this, this, that goes some way into combating that reading at home, being students being able to have access to those resources. And um, it's interesting because, you know, in some schools, kind of the, the library has been a little bit marginalised or in, in terms of funding, the, the librarian is, is no longer there. Um, and it, it's a shame, isn't it? Because they, they do play such a kind of vital role um, in terms of being knowledgeable about the text and really um, enhancing people's enjoyment of them. And also there is a time and a place where pupils select their own texts. Um, I know that as, as teachers, obviously, we want to put as much rigour in and we, we choose selects, uh, we select texts for a number of different reasons, but, but we kind of also want pupils to be able to select their own texts um, too. Evan, what do you think um, about some of the main challenges to do with um, improving people's reading skills? Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think um, what we're kind of seeing now is one of the big impacts of COVID, I think, the young pupils, I think, get better at reading by regularly reading um, over and over again. And that's how they got better. And I think one of the big impacts of COVID was we didn't get that opportunity to listen to our pupils read and for them to change their books. And I think um, that had a massive impact that they missed all of these opportunities where normally they would be getting two or three books um, a week and we'd be progressing through the stages. Um, we missed that opportunity, which I think has had a big impact. And I also think that um, in primary school, we, we have this challenging group of pupils that they've got the basics of reading, but um, they haven't yet got that reading fluency level. So although they can read, they haven't got that love of reading yet that comes when you can actually just sit down and open a book. So um, that also shows the kind of challenge with silent reading, because to be um, an effective silent reader, you actually need to actually sit down and be able to open a book and actually read that book and actually enjoy that book. Um, so it's for us getting those pupils that can read to fluent readers who actually are starting to love reading, who will actually sit down and actually enjoy reading a book. I think that's our most challenging group of pupils in primary school. Of course. And um, it, it is su such a shame, really, isn't it? Because um, as much as, as pupils could probably read for enjoyment at home, if they haven't got those kind of comprehension skills, and there's not that kind of accountability where um, you're kind of checking their knowledge, checking their understanding, gui guiding them through. Um, you're, you're, you're kind of lost a little bit and they're kind of lost. Um, and also it's, it's quite difficult when they 
um, return um, after COVID-19 to try to gauge gauge where they are and they'd all be at different places, have diff have had different experiences. Um, it's, it's really, really tough. Um, what about um, the importance of challenge and rigour in terms of developing pupils' reading skills? I, I think that's uh, that's really important because sometimes the reality is is obviously in in our in our in our cupboards we have limited availability of text and limited budgets to be able to buy new resources. But I also think that sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. So you know we might discount texts because we might see them as being too challenging or you know for the top set. Um, but I think it's so important. To, to expose these children to challenging texts so that we can, you know, build up their confidence, build up their reading skills, their comprehension, their fluency, but also expose them to, to other voices, to, to some diverse texts um, and to other experiences. Because too often we do write, sometimes we write off the text because we just think, oh, they won't be able to access it. And I think sometimes it's important to, to be thinking about instead of, right, I'm not going to go into to use this text because it's so challenging, think about how we can put measures in to support them in the first exactly. place. Exactly. To understand. Definitely. Um, I would entirely, entirely agree with you in terms of that, because um, a lot of the time we can scaffold our um, our pupils in terms of perhaps our our talk in the classroom or um, our use of questioning to try to get them to the stage where they can com comprehend more more challenging texts. Um, perhaps we wouldn't select them, you know, for them to read independently. Um, but certainly when we're there and we can um, can really guide them along the way. Um, they they can be introduced to those those kind of texts, not. Um, and not have them written off. Um, and also, I think it's important to, to touch upon the fact that challenge in reading comes from lots of different areas, doesn't it? Um, whereas perhaps traditionally, I would have thought it would be the lexile level or the theme and the content of the text. Um, now we can think about um, text difficulty in terms of um, you know the concepts or the the narration or the sim the use of symbolism um in the text um so that that's a really kind of interesting development again comes with um reading reconsidered uh, five plagues um not so sure on on the name five plagues it doesn't sound very very appealing um but they categorize um text into into five different areas of of difficulty um, which I think is a, a really, really good way of going about it and a good way of structuring it for practitioners. Um, Evan, would you say that um, the tide's kind of changing in terms of, of rigour and reading and kind of asking pupils to read above their pay grade, as Mary Myatt would say? Yeah, um, I think one of the big things about challenging and kind of stretching pupils is the difference between the individual silent reading and the reading as a group and reading as a class. Because I think that when you are reading aloud and when you are reading with groups, that does allow you to stretch and do the challenging texts because you can actually then stop and talk about it as a class, look at the different language, look at the different knowledge that's involved. Mm -hmm. And I think by looking at reading in these different ways, it does allow you to um, use those more challenging texts. If you link it in the reading reconsidered way and you embed these different types of um, texts as well, that's another way of stretching. So. I definitely think it is moving towards the more challenging text um, being used more widely in classes um, by kind of teaching reading in a slightly different way to mm. maybe what we would have done traditionally. Yeah, and um, I suppose that kind of um, brings me on to my next question, which would be about um, what what sort of rationale do you have when you're selecting a text? So the reading reconsidered five plagues are archaic language, whether the text is non-linear, uh, whether the text is narratively complex, um, there's a use of, of symbolism, or whether the text is deliberately resistant um, to deciphering meaning, such as kind of poetry. Um, but what, what kind of things do you consider? Do you consider things like text length or um the, the text relationship to the world and the cultural capital you'll be building or does it just depend on 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 the skill that you're trying to teach the the learners what what kind of rationale do you use 
I think for us, sometimes we are guilty of focusing on the skill um, and then picking a text where the student might be able to you know, access that skill through that text. And I think the five plagues of re reading are really useful to allow us to sort of um, go back and, and reflect on that and just make sure that we are including things like archa archaic texts and symbolic texts um, in our schemes of work. So I think at, at the moment, perhaps we are very skills focused, as I sort of said earlier on, um, but we trying to move beyond that now. I think the new curriculum um, is giving us an opportunity actually be, to, to sort of reevaluate re where we are. And um, with that, with literature kind of being recognised and some of those kind of traditionally sort of softer skills um, being flagged up as being important, that's giving us the opportunity to reevaluate that and then ensure that we, we can give text to students that offer something that is Bit, a bit different, give them give them a you know diverse voices, a, a cultural experience, giving them that. I think is really important. You know, identity is is one of the um, one of the main things that's flagged up in the in the curriculum, and being able to give them texts from different perspectives um, as well. So I think we've got a good opportunity at the moment to actually go back and and reevaluate what we're doing with our, with our reading curriculum. Yeah, I love that idea, Amy. And it is, it is a journey, isn't it? And it, it takes time to to plan a, a, a reading curriculum. And I, I really like the idea of you seeing it, seeing curriculum for, Wales, for Wales as um, an opportunity. And I suppose you, you're right when you say that some of the things that are really foregrounded in that framework are identity and perhaps authentic Welsh, um, Welsh context. So it's, it's about kind of reevaluating, yeah, and, and, and thinking about, um, how you can make changes um, for the better and and kind of improve that rigor. So thanks for that. What about you, Evan, um, in terms of your rationale for tech selection? Yeah, I, I totally agree with what Amy just said about using the curriculum for Wales for a new opportunity. And um, one thing I heard recently that kind of really resonated with me was someone, I can't remember who said it, but they said experts learn better than novices. So. Um, what we're trying to do now with our text, um, with the new curriculum for Wales, is what we're, we're trying to choose our um, text so that there are links throughout the school. So when we're choosing one text, we know that further on down the line, the language and the vocabulary and the skills we're doing will then link into what we're doing later on in the year and later on in the curriculum. So everything is being linked together. And I think by using our reading texts to make our pupils experts and to make our pupils have a wide range of knowledge, which will then link into what they're doing in the future, it should hopefully allow us to choose um, more challenging and stretching texts that our pupils are going to really enjoy reading because it's going to link back into their previous learning from before. So the Curriculum for Wales is a massive opportunity for us to kind of go back to the drawing board and come up with all these new um, ways of choosing the texts that we're going to be reading in the future. That's great. Thank you, Evan. And I suppose um, that that's you you flagging up the importance of knowledge in, in terms of reading as well. The idea that we can't um, make inferences without those kind of background um, connections that the, the schema there. Um, and I love the idea of curriculum planning on a, on a whole school um, whole school level. Um, what is the relationship between reading and other disciplines then and other other subject areas? I'm thinking here about how we can create buy-in and, and get all staff to kind of consider themselves as teachers of reading or, or have the confidence to teach reading. I think um, obviously in secondary it's, it's very much the case that students need to be able to read the curriculum to be able to access it and I think that you know th that's why exposure to so many different texts within English is so important and reading and exposure to these different experiences um, helps them to kind of establish those wider connections mm -hmm. and I think it's about flagging that up to you know to other teachers to to show that whilst they're de whilst you're developing their reading skills you're you're opening them up to to a wider understanding and that knowledge acquisition um, that they can develop from being experienced readers, confident readers. It really does broaden their, their understanding, broadens their experience, and then allows them to, to, to reach these, these other opportunities, so allows them to access you know, other areas of the curriculum more successfully as a result. Um, and I think it's just making, you know, building up that confidence in other teachers and making other students aware that whilst we're teaching them to explicitly read and decode and teaching them that unf those unfamiliar terms of vocabulary that's helping them to to access 
they, they acknowledge it within that area as well and then you know be, becoming more successful um, as a result of that completely and um i think one one really interesting exercise um is to actually look at the reading ages um of, of some of the past papers the same reading ages as perhaps a pupil would need to read the the, the times newspaper and i think that really opens pu people's eyes up um colleagues eyes up i know that obviously we're not teaching reading just to pass exams but i think it, it kind of creates a sense of buy-in doesn't it if if pupils can't read the exam question they can't access it and they they, they can't get that qualification um what about you evan um what what do you think in, in terms of that that question there and about kind of the relationship between reading and and all subject areas yeah well Reading is just it's this huge gateway subject. Without reading, you can't access so much of the curriculum and it's such an important life skill to have. And I think um, staff buy-in isn't so much of an issue down in primary just because we are all um, responsible for all of the different subjects. But I think one thing that we do need to kind of look at at the primary level is looking at how we can um, use um, our science lessons, our history lessons, our geography lessons to introduce those more challenging texts and to look at these sessions as not only um, teaching of geographies and history skills, but also as an opportunity to get in texts that are linked to what we're doing in other subjects and actually using all of our subjects together to improve on the reading because reading is such an important skill that's going to help um, in so many other areas. Yeah, and, and having that kind of collective effort towards it. Um, so, um, what about in terms of the ways forward? Um, so you've talked a little bit about where you are now, um, but what do you think about in terms of where you would like to be with your kind of reading curriculum or your your whole school reading um, culture? Have you got any any plans? I, th I think for us, um, it's about giving us the, like I said before, the opportunity to to look back at our curriculum now and to make sure that we're introducing more a greater range of diverse texts and diverse voices in there and also giving teachers the um the confidence really to be able to to not teach reading in such a disjointed way as we have previously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so stopping and evaluating after every chapter perhaps or answering a lot of questions and and giving them the opportunity to to say that it's okay to to read a text to with the class and stop as you go on to, to just a check understanding and and do that through questioning with the class do that through vocabulary teaching but not necessarily children don't necessarily need to do a lot of writing tasks linked to reading to be able to enjoy a particular text mm -hmm. and i think sometimes teachers are so frightened about having evidence in the books that actually that does take away from the the, the fluency of a text um, and and you know there's, there's there's research to show that that fluency and being able to read a, you know a novel or a text with a class quite quickly um, is actually something that's really important. So I think for us, that's something that we, we're looking at and um, making sure that we, we have the opportunity to do that, certainly within our key stage three curriculum um, and making sure we, we do prioritise reading with the class, reading for, for sort of enjoyment and reading for understanding and fluency. Because I think mm -hmm. if we don't model that reading, how can we then expect them to go on and be good readers if we're not doing that with them and for them? Yeah, that's great. And, and equally seeing that, um, perhaps reading, or, or it doesn't have to be reading on its own either. I mean, there are there are so many different activities that you can do linked um, to reading that still improve the reading fluency. So, the, you know, the vocabulary instruction and, and the embedding of nonfiction, um, all of those things. And, and also the, that, you know, reading straight and, and reading for fluency, again, that has, has its place and not seeing it as a kind of either or. Um, Evan, what what do you think in in terms of your your plans whole school? Because I know that you're your deputy head. Um, do you have kind of plans in terms of reading initiatives or um, your next steps in terms of curriculum for Wales? Um, how how do you see your your kind of next stages? So um, our targets for the last few years have been for the reading for enjoyment. So we have every class doing that um, at the end of every day and for the embedding of nonfiction. But in, in the future, um, it is all about the curriculum for Wales. And um, what we have what we're looking at is 
we're seeing the curriculum for Wales as a real opportunity to um, get high quality text throughout the whole curriculum. And when we are planning our new curriculum, we're, we're planning on whenever we do a unit of work for there to be a high quality text linked to that Lovely. and eventually for our whole school to have links throughout all of the different units of work so that when we're teaching a high quality text and knowledge and vocabulary I uh, say in term one year three we'll know that they learned certain knowledge and vocabulary back in year two but we'll also know that the knowledge and vocabulary we're teaching here will have links to what we're doing in year four and year five and at the moment we're kind of in the planning stages and it's quite a daunting task to get all this done but if we can get it right and if we can actually plan so we have all of these links throughout the school um we're hoping that we can really push our, for, our pupils and stretch them and actually have a curriculum that reading will be at the heart of it and reading will be throughout all of the different subjects and allow us to really push our pupils and fingers crossed uh, we'll be ready to go with all that in September but it's quite a daunting task at the moment. Oh fantastic it it sounds so so um, exciting and um, I love the idea of making sure that everything is kind of coherent and, and, and joined up and um, you know, having that opportunity to not necessarily reinvent the wheel, but but just tweak things and 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 look at how um, how our tech selection can have an impact um, elsewhere across the the curriculum. And finally, um, where would we start in terms of uh, reading about reading? Um, so you may want to suggest perhaps what your starting point was in terms of in terms of research um, or any texts that have resonated with you? Um, yeah, so first of all, obviously the reading reconsidered um, is one of the, the, the one of the things that really has, has made me rethink my approach to um to text in my class. Also the um the UK Literacy Association, they have some papers on there as well. So there was one um which was called the uh, the impact of a faster pace uh, faster paced narratives on the comprehension of, of poorer um, readers in the classroom. That was a really interesting um, research project where it looked at how um, reading more quickly in the classroom could impact and improve the um, the reading ages of, of, of students aged 12 to 13 and how they could um, how they were classed they were classed as poor readers and how the impact of reading quickly with them actually improved for some of them their reading age by 16 months wow um, so that was a, it was a really interesting paper um by I think it's joe joe westbrook and um, so that was, that's a good place to start um and for me and that's something that that's that's kind of as it as um, informed you know where we want to go with with our curriculum um and, and incorporating that kind of that text to read quite quickly with the class that's great. Thanks a lot, um, Amy. And then Evan, what about you? Yeah, I would also um, agree with the read and reconsidered. So um, I know that quite often you go on training, it just completely opens your eyes to different things. But reading reconsidered was just one of those uh, training um, approaches that just completely changed the way we do things. And the thing I really like about reading reconsidered is um, you could there are so many just small simple things that you yeah. can just add in rather than just completely go back to the drawing boards it's just uh, little tweaks and little ad adaptations to what you're already doing which makes mm. it really easy to introduce as a whole staff and introduce in class which is uh, what I really liked about that approach so yeah that would be the one that I would say yeah and it's a it's a train the trainer model as well so once you've once you've done that training um you you kind of set up to be able to cascade um cascade the knowledge to others and it's really interesting that um you can kind of have a two-pronged approach one in which you you think about the strategies that you you'd roll out perhaps in your immediate team and then think about the the priorities for you, for you as a whole school um so yeah, as if we haven't mentioned it enough, I would I would agree with the the reading reconsidered um, too. I'd also um, highly recommend Alex Quigley's closing the reading gap. Um, there's lots of practical strategies for every um, for teachers at every phase of their teaching career. Um, also deals with things like dyslexia and the role of technology and. Um, uh, gives information on learning to read as well as reading to learn. So I'd recommend that. Um, thank you both very much. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Evan. I've really enjoyed um, talking to you about reading today and we've had some uh, illuminating discussions. Um, so thank you so much. Um,
please follow uh, CSC underscore LLC on Twitter if you want some signposting to um, our professional learning. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Dil Chamrando ar y bennod hon o sgwrs. Cofiwch ein dilyn ar Twitter a Facebook, tan ysgrifio ein sianel YouTube, a mi nhw yn cymunedau ar ein gwefan a darllen ein bulletin ysgolion athnosol am y newyddion diwyn araf. Thanks for listening to this episode of Sgwrs. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, join our online communities via our website and read our weekly school bulletin for the latest news. Hwyl y mytro. Bye for now.